Welcome out to another episode of It's All Been Turned Before. This time, the first duty. The first duty, yes, get your snickering out of the way. But really, your first duty is not only to It's All Been Turned Before, but what about to the mothership? That's where our first duty is, the first duty. They're back, August 13th. New venue, Boxland Media. Yeah, check it out. Inaugurate it. Uh, break it in. That's your first duty. The first time, Boxland Media. Tickets at iabbpresents.com. And this is first duty. On It's All Been Trek Before. Welcome out to It's All Been Trek Before. Your regular hosts are here. This is Stephen. And Keith. Jimmy Jerome. It's my duty to inform you. We're discussing first duty. First impressions. My first impression was duty. You know, it's the first thing. So, uh, you know, they, they had the... Um, the school come on you know we're gonna they, they announced right off the bat we're gonna see wesley crusher he's he's we're ready to, to rendezvous with him mm-hmm. then they give you that i said a horrible tease in the cold open but those credits aren't going to roll themselves so <laughs> <laughs> it's something to just like <laughs> yeah i thought for a second oh this might just be a let's let's explore some relationships episode but it was not to be it was uh <laughs> yeah, so overall, uh, though, for the episode, my first impression of the entire episode, I think I wanted to like it more. I think it's still a really good episode. There's some great moments in it. I don't know that I, I loved it. I think I wanted to. Great cast. I don't know. Maybe you guys will talk me into it, but I guess I, I said this, I think, a couple weeks ago. I don't think it hung the moon, but, I, but a, <laughs> a good episode. I mean, no, they were doing maneuvers near the moon. They didn't hang the moon. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I, I liked it quite a bit. I agree that it wasn't the best episode of the next generation or the best episode of the season, but I think there was an interesting moral quandary. They played with it. And I liked that it wasn't so cut and dry Hmm. or that characters, the characters had some wiggle room for understanding and they did make you feel sympathy for the quote unquote villains of the piece. Like you did kind of see where they were coming from, in my opinion. So and as a kid, I think I would have been like, nope, Wesley was in the right for sure. I still think that. But as an adult, I can see where the other people are coming from, especially as children. Like they are children if they're college students. If you're 22. Yeah. I see what his point is, is, you know, like nothing. We've already the worst has already happened. Should more bad come of it? Or should we just move on? And and yes, this sucks and we're going to feel that. But who's it hurting to cover it up if nobody's going to know? And morally, it does hurt people because his family needs to know the truth. And, you know, you want his reputation to be protected. But at the same time, it's like, but he's dead. His reputation doesn't matter so much anymore. Are you going to kill the career of four cadets? Which ended up not killing all four of their careers. But I don't know. I think it's a tough Thing. It's a situation worth wrestling with. And even if the heroic thing is ultimately what happens, I, I guess I understand where a lot of people would probably go along with the, the cover up. Yep. Yeah. And I, I spent the whole episode and, you know, I always talk about well, what's the mystery in this episode. And for me, the mystery was why isn't Wesley saying anything yet? So we had to wait the whole episode for him to finally say, <laughs> well, I know something was done wrong. I mean, there was there was him finally acknowledging that he was involved and then him coming stepping forward. I wish he'd done it sooner, but again, you kind of touched on that, Jimmy, where it's like he's not in the enterprise anymore, you know. But but you know, and it is college and you do dumb things there. Fortunately for me, none of involved in anyone dying, you know. I mean, you can easily um, see this being like a drunken frat thing. Yeah. That's been in the news before. And that's a that's actually a really good analogy because in my mind, I was like, why is it this dumb thing where they're just flying around? They're just like, we got to do this to impress everybody. Mm-hmm. But that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I think Wesley, of course, ultimately did the right thing. And I, I'm impressed with the maturity that, yeah, I mean, granted, Picard basically said, you do this or I will. But at the same time, I'm not sure Picard was going to because the trial was over and they were making their ruling. And I feel yeah. like maybe Picard did. And they were just like, well, there's no proof like the judge ended up ruling. Right, uh, but I, Wesley got away with it, and then he came forward, which to me was mature and impressive. But a couple of things about that. I mean, I, yeah. I didn't have it written down here, but as, I, as we were talking, I realized that they kind of so they set the stage for what is what has gone wrong, and you're already suspicious, you know, the way they're walking you mm-hmm. through it, and you're starting to figure mm-hmm. it out. And 
at that point, once they get to the, the, the hard quandary right there, when the, when the kids are talking about it, they start moving the needle slightly. You know, they, they get to the point where, where Wesley is told point blank, I, you know, I know what you did. We figured it out. Here, here it is. We laid it out right here. Even if you don't tell them, I'm going to know you did it. Uh, what they got through with it. They didn't get away scot-free though. I mean, they, they even announced, we're pretty sure you did something and we're going to be suspicious anyway, but here's what we're technically going to do. And we're still going to punish you. I don't know how long they're going to be grounded or taken, you know, have their flight privileges taken away, but that's still pretty significant. I would think. It is, but it's not the same as getting expelled. And I think when Wesley right. came forward with the truth, he had every expectation that his career was over and they were going to expel him. Mm-hmm. That is true. And I'm just saying, it's st- still just, it's sort of like they kept uh, you know, the, the, like the, the price tag was started starting to either drop or raise or something. I'm not really sure what the, what the metaphor would be in this scenario, but it did feel like they kept kind of inching it just a bit. Well, I do think the most heroic thing would have been to him to come forward earlier, of course, mm-hmm. but had he come forward just by being forced by Picard before sentence was put down, that would have looked really bad and not made him look good at all. Right. And I think they found a nice middle ground where they can show his flaws and his weaknesses mm-hmm. because coming forward early may not have felt completely authentic, um, but they found that point where he could still come forward and it, it meant something. Yeah. And I think my problem might be, on me more than anything than, uh, and just listen, you guys that in my mind, you know, as annoying as some people find was and everything else, I feel like, and maybe this is kind of what Picard's saying is, and I don't know that, I don't think Beverly says it because we really don't get to see how she feels about, I mean, she's worried about her son, obviously, but in my mind, it's like, man, we, in my mind, it comes down to a parent thing, which I'm not a parent, obviously, but we all know this trope. I, I trained you, I, I taught you better than this and you did this. And I feel like, and that's just me being like, man, he did so many great things on the enterprise. He couldn't possibly backslide. And for me, it's like, he should have been the one of like, no, let's not try this. But on the other hand, again, to your point, Jimmy, he's a kid. He, at the end of the day, he is still whatever, 19, 20 or whatever he is. So yeah. I always think of Starfleet. And I think I said as far as a graduate school, but it makes more sense. The Naval Academy and West Point, I think mm-hmm. those guys are, same college as we were when we went to college, yeah. Yeah. Also, so he, uh, I'm not sure how many years he's been off the, the ship at this point, too. But Two. he's right. So he's he's been outside of their influence for quite a bit, and they made a point of bringing up how his uh, squad leader inspires that kind of devotion oh, and yeah. influence. You know, it's, it is essentially mm-hmm. him abusing his power to to even get them at in that position to begin with. That's good Cadet point. First Class Nicholas Lacardo, played by Robbie Duncan McNeil who many of you may recognize most best known for in my mind and check it. If I am yeah, IMDb does not agree with me somehow. IMDb says he's best known for masters of the universe, 1987. What? But second best what known for on IMDb and best known for, in my opinion, uh, playing Lieutenant Tom Paris on yeah. Star Trek Voyager. Yeah. That was my, second character. Note. my second note was, is that Tom Paris? It is. Excited. Yeah, I, was, I was like, I wasn't sure. I was like, wait, yeah, it has to be. That was like my third or fourth note. But yeah, that it is Tom Paris, who will be a lead character in Voyager. And my biggest question of using him this way here is he does play a different character in Voyager, but I kind of feel like it should have just been the same character. When oh. we meet him in Voyager, oh, wow. he's a screw up who's washed out of Starfleet. His admiral father is somebody he hasn't been able to live up to, and he's in prison. Uh, oh, wow. So... I kind of feel like they should have just made it Nick Lasarno or whatever on so, Voyager. I don't know why they needed to change the name. Really of I did read that they based that character on this guy huh. or and they were like, we want a guy like that guy. And they want an actor like that guy, but they kept auditioning people and they're like, why don't we just get that guy? So they went <laughs> and got him to play the part. It's like, that's hilarious. It, they were, you know, it's that, you know, it's that trying to be cute or s- smart. And it's just like, why don't you just do the thing you're going to do? And so, yeah, but no, yeah, this guy's too big for this role. Let's just, uh, <laughs> he will never be able to get him. And of course he, he recently cameoed, reprised the role of Tom Paris in an episode of Star Trek Lower Decks. Uh, yeah. I was like, oh, which one was that? I, I'm sure I know which one, but that I mean, brings I, me I know I saw to it. my alternate episode 
I think it would have been smarter of Lower Decks to have a Nick Lasardo collectible plate instead of a Tom Paris. Oh, wow. Or have both, or made uh, some joke about somebody like, oh, you collect Tom Paris? I got Nick Lasardo, or yeah. something there would have been really fun. That would have been funny. Did, didn't that was call the perfect him? time to do it, but that was my alternate episode, getting it out of the way early. Didn't they call him a rogue in, in Lower Decks? I don't remember. Probably. Yeah. I mean, Tom <laughs> Paris is kind of a jerk, and he still acts like this, like, on Voyager, <laughs> so we'll see. I mean, he's what some people would deem a lovable jerk, but he's still got that jerk quality yeah. pretty much through the entire seven seasons. Uh, he's also famous for being a director. He directed a bunch of Voyager uh, episodes, and he... <laughs> I mean, and this goes to where I think him and his character kind of might have something a little bit in common, where he's made comments publicly about, I'd really like to direct Star Trek Discovery, but I think they already have met their quota of white men, so I guess I can't. And it's just like, dude, calm yourself down. I mean, I could see it that he may, he may believe that, and maybe he's right. They want a more diverse roster, and they've got Jonathan Frakes, and he's the best, so you don't need another white dude but at the same time so what like there have been (laughs) quotas everywhere and finally it applies to a white dude that's fine yeah i guess if he said in the context of the last thing they need is another white guy which yeah i read the quote so but yeah i read it i didn't hear it so that that i yeah i miss in the context and he did direct some of it star trek enterprise as well after voyager so but yeah he's done a lot of directing uh las Mm -hmm. vegas he directed 21 episodes of the show chuck you may have seen oh. uh, two episodes of the Orville. So yes. he's still, he's still doing stuff, mm-hmm. but so many guest stars in this episode, but let's jump back to the yeah. beginning of the episode. <laughs> Cause I haven't even talked about my first note, the whole thing where they're talking about Wesley's doing the flight thing and Picard's giving the commencement. I mean, that's a pretty big honor to give the commencement to Starfleet Academy, but I guess Picard's at that level. Yeah. I mean, he's an ambassador and he's the captain of the flagship. Well, he was captain of the Stargazer for years before the flagship. Like, he earned his right. way up. Yeah. yeah. And he's on TV every week. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed the little interchange with Riker and Picard talking about their superintendents of Starfleet Academy when they were in. And mm-hmm. Riker was talking about his was a Balkan and uh, the Picard's was a Betazoid. And Picard was called to the office. And they're like, what? You were called to the office? Which reminded me of a recent meme I seen going around that's basically it's a kirk picard meme it's like everybody thinks kirk is this like reckless whatever but back in school he was the nerdy book smart kid and everybody thinks picard's the nerdy book smart one but back yeah. in school he was reckless and that's wild hmm. which we'll see more of in an upcoming episode of flashing back to picard's academy days uh once we get to you know keith's uh before the run credits i just wrote down <laughs> or maybe it was right after space travel is still dangerous. And this was written by our friend, Ronald D Moore, who, you know, I, I'll plug it again for all mankind on, on Apple, Apple plus Apple TV, whatever it, it's Apple <laughs> TV. You, you know what it is if you're here. Uh, and <laughs> that's kind of, I shouldn't say it's a message, but it's definitely the thing that comes home a lot. And we've talked about, on, about this series and TOS is, and of course I bring in the Colin doc, Colleen doctrine that yeah, space travel is dangerous, especially exploring strange new worlds and uh ronald d moore brings it home all the time so i i i, I mean his, I that was his reimagining of mouse galactica was amazing mm-hmm. so it was co-written by ronald d moore and naren shankar i'm probably mispronouncing that but shankar this was his first writing credit for next generation but he'll go on to write several more as well as serve as story editor in the last season before writing an episode of voyager a couple of deep space nine and the star trek generations video game uh, as well as another next gen video game so He's more recently been a producer on the and writer on the Expanse. The the other thing that made me think of For All Mankind was when they were like, yeah, their formation they were ten meters apart because on For All Mankind it's set with the beginning of the space race through the eighties so far. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Keith, I just ruined it for you. But Shane uh, Carr's also <laughs> a producer on For All Mankind. <laughs> you know, they get in a lot of the the test test pilot, a lot of test piloting kind of stuff, and so it made me think, okay, this is mm-hmm. something Ronald Moore's into. But I was like, ten meters apart out in space. But then later when they're like, oh, we were trying to do this specific insane maneuver, it made sense. But at the time, I'm like, you're out in space, you got all that room? 10 meters? Well, I think it's kind of like, I think it isn't like the Blue Angels, Angels, they do the tricky maneuvers. But yeah, 80,000 kilometers 
per hour and less than 10 meters apart. That sounds so dangerous. That yeah. is insane. And it was dangerous. Dead, deadly dangerous. That's why it was banned. So Picard yeah. gets a call from his friend, Admiral Brand, because everybody's his friend. He knows everybody there. Played by Jacqueline Brooks, uh, who was best known for The Good Son, the 1993 movie with Macaulay Culkin, yeah. as well as Nicky Gun Two and a Half, Sea of Love, and Last Embrace. I kept Still thinking has, I from uh, most of her credits ended after the 90s. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it was it was Nicky Gun Two and a Half. I remember she was she was Frank Drebin's boss. Yeah, so, yeah. She this was one of her last credits. She only had a couple after this. One in 2011 after being inactive for. 15 years, but I guess she was great, uh, great stage actress. Hmm. Also. Looks like she also did some soap operas. Mm. I don't see any Seinfeld credits. No but... Seinfeld. I was sure, I was sure when I saw her that she was, but we so should we'll calls... get into some Seinfeld before we get out of here, though, for sure. So she calls Picard, lets him know stuff's going on. Um, I really liked the scene with Beverly she didn't get as much to do as I felt like she deserved in this episode but that scene where they let her know that something's mm-hmm. going on and she's worried about Wesley's allergies and he's allergic to this medication and everything yeah. it's like I'm sure Starfleet knows that and they've got it under control but it's nice to see her play the worried mother mm-hmm. especially Speaking in this instance it, 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 it makes sense sorry Keith. yeah well you mentioned something before and I should have keyed on keyed in on that earlier when I was watching it but uh they were talking about their superintendents or their commandants or whatever and mentioned the full Betazoid. And of course, uh, Troy is, is absent for this episode conveniently. <laughs> because oh, she would have been like, hey, these people are lying about something. Oh, but they could figure that out without needing a Betazoid. Right. But I mean, that's, I guess that's the point. They wanted people to be able to figure it out without the Betazoid. Mm-hmm. That, that's a good point. Yeah, Picard's old superintendent would have just walked right in and knew right away what had happened. <laughs> Why don't they keep a Betazoid available for situations <laughs> like that? Picard knew right away because there's a couple shots of him giving the death stare to the enti- all, all four of those guys. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, I would not want Patrick Stewart looking at me that way. Oh, my God. Yeah, he was, he was pissed. So right at the beginning when they were going and, you know, they, they, they see that Wesley's fine. They go to his room and he's just kind of shifting like, guys, you, we need to get uh, it's fine. You, you can go. We need to talk. I need to talk to something or talk about something with this guy. Get out, please. Yeah, <laughs> it was just like right. And I'm like, well, all right, they're getting their story straight. So, <laughs> oh, absolutely. Did you notice in Wesley's room, he's got a model of the original series Enterprise on his desk? Uh, I missed it. it. I was trying to look around. Oh, I was front of camera. It was wow. like up close. I thought that was cool. I also enjoyed Picard asking Wesley if he'd like to talk about it. And Wesley's like, you know, I've been through it all much, which was understandable before even you saying was shifty. Like, yeah, you've got over and over. And Picard's like, yeah, but. You know, if you need to, I'm here for you. And I just appreciated that. We we saw the relationship grown, or we, we saw it grow. And the way they ended it, they parted as, like, mature adults. And I mm-hmm. liked seeing it come back as Picard still treating him as a grown-up and not a child. Yeah. Do you, think, do you think it was that, or was it some sort of, he's still a little disappointed, and that was kind of like a stiff kind of, we're, this is, we're back to professional as opposed to being closely familiar? I think this was before... They knew anything was up, so I thought it was. No, just I'm, talking being... the, I'm talking about the end of the episode. Yeah. Where, uh, uh, I thought that's what you were talking about. No, was I was talking part? about in the room when Bacard oh, okay. comes in. The room, the the dorm room, that first yeah. shot. It's nice. Wes has a private dorm room. I mean, that's pretty cool. It's pretty big too. Though they had several <laughs> new sets this yeah. this week, and the dorm room was cool. I liked the presentation room a lot that they we were spent so much time in. I like the design of it and the small tiered seating and everything. But also, I wondered. How much use does that room get? It only seats about 20 people. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought too. I'm like, shouldn't it? And shouldn't there be more people here for this? Con- uh, the very opening of it, they're like, well, here's what we think happened. We're going to have an inquiry and all that. I'm like, I feel like wouldn't the, would the press be there? I don't know. I don't know if it's a big deal. Might be. In the future. I don't know, but that's a good point too about we, we, you don't really get to see, at least not in these, this phase of Star Trek, the idea of there being this out, the, the civilization or the civilians that are a part of this and what they would care about or what they would have access to for confidential reasons or whatever. Cause and we're always just like to, all the way on the inside. Yeah. It's similar to star Wars. Like you never see, you don't see a lot of media in the future well, so or in the past. In the, and, and this is novels, but you remember there's the novel I mentioned a couple of years ago, articles of the Federation. 
um, which is about it's it's completely set at Federation headquarters and deals with the president and her staff who appear in multiple novels, but there's one novel about them. And handling the media is something they worry about and discuss, and they have a press room, and they still go through all that. Uh, but that's the politicians. Starfleet's the military, and I think you're right. right. When you, you like a trial at West Point, they're not gonna. The media is not gonna really be let in for that. I don't think. I think that's yeah. more private. Humanity. And I think that's what this is. It's being handled internally by the military. Because yeah, a few good men. There were no journalists there either. So. Right. <laughs> Which at the beginning, I, I, a lot of. Uh, I shouldn't say a lot of it. It made me think of a few good men, but the, definitely the storyline was different. Other than it was a military tribunal, more. Or less. With the way things were set up. I think that I felt a little disappointed by the time we got to the end of it. I st- start getting oddly high expectations for trial episodes. Mm-hmm. Those are always kind of <laughs> kind of entertaining, and you know the procedurals of it. And it's, it's, we, we get some of that, but it was only just for like a little bit, just to again like move the needle and the stakes a bit, and mm-hmm. advance the story in that way. But you don't really there. It didn't. There wasn't. Didn't feel like there was as much of a puzzle to go through with as far as that went. Yeah, and there there wasn't that adversarial relationship we've seen in other episodes. So we had Richard Fancy of Seinfeld fame, uh, Mr. Lipman, uh, Elaine's boss, and for a very brief time, George's boss before he he slept with the cleaning lady on his desk. Was that wrong? Was that wrong? Yeah. Should I have, should I not have done that? Um, so I wish I was very excited to see him. Uh, What's I've the actor's name? Richard Fancy. He oh, was, playing the Vulcan, Captain yeah. Setlek. Yes, Setlek. I had yes. no idea. Best known, he's best known for The Girl Next Door, Tango and Cash, Hollywood Land, and What About Bob, according to IMDb. Hmm. IMDb is a odd animal, but I don't know what their criteria is there. But yeah, I was like, oh, right. it's, it's Mr. Lippman. But um, him, he was uh, clearly the prosecutor. And I, I loved his, I mean, he, the Vulcan, it, quite often you're like, oh, this guy's got it together. And he was kind of the spot, like, well, let me ask you this, and let me ask you this, and let me ask you this. <laughs> And he had information that they didn't, which I'll put on my lawyer hat here. And, uh, and I, it may be different in a military tribunal, but I don't think it is, you know, and it, well, I guess it wasn't a criminal trial. It was a, it was just a, let's find out what happened here. So yeah, I guess he wouldn't have had to share everything, but they didn't have anyone representing them. But I think where uh, we get that, that speech or whatever that we would have loved to get is, is Picard's speech about, and he said it, the first duty which is the truth. And I think that's where we get the speech he would have given or not, maybe not the speech he would have given, but that's, uh, this, well, the that same be, level that would not be in their defense though. Would it, I mean, no, 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 that would not have been, <laughs> that would just been, uh, I can't represent you anymore. unless You're going <laughs> to tell me the truth, which is something, Hey, if you're in trouble, if the, the one person you don't want to lie to is your attorney, if you lie to them, now you're really screwed. You're screwing yourself. <laughs> Just like I mean, they the really thing. missed the opportunity to bring back Samuel T. Cogley, but, you know. Uh, okay. <laughs> of course. It did feel like some of the court martial episodes of the past, like the Menagerie or yes. Court Martial. Yeah. Yeah, and I wanted, I, I felt like, and this goes to your point, Jimmy, at the beginning of, of the, you know, the whole, well, it's a college prank kind of thing. Not college prank, but, you know, mm-hmm. because there's somebody dead. Although, obviously, that happens, you know, we, we live in. Yeah, Ohio, where we just passed these hazy laws, where you know, and I guess you know every state has these terrible hazy things, but uh, these incidents that happen. So I, I don't know if the stakes felt as high. Well, I guess you know what we we thought Wesley was going to get drummed out of Starfleet. I, I guess those are high stakes. I guess in my mind, I didn't think it would happen, but he did get reprimanded. He did he did get in trouble. So I, yeah, I guess the stakes. I guess the stakes were high. I mean, it could it could have easily been a device to get him back on the ship full time or something. Sure. Sure. So they set it up to be like a, a like a potentially interesting trial episode. Mm-hmm. And they also set it up to be, I think as someone mentioned at the beginning, uh character development episode or, 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 or which it was to some extent, but it was very narrowly focused. Yeah. Well, and they don't really get Will Wheaton that much. This is like, you get him for an hour. Right. There's that, but there's also, they, they give us some more Picard than you would expect in a way. I actually really liked the way that they they wrapped it up at the end and hinted at it, hinted at what must have happened. You know, they, they gave us a little bit at the beginning with the uh, the groundskeeper, and then uh, yes, and then the the exact wording he used at the end was our confirmation that he went through something very similar that Picard did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree. I I like the parallels. I really liked getting to see Boothby. Uh, played by the great Ray Walston, or, who's 
According to IMDb, best known for Popeye, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, The Sting, Paint Your Wagon. He also was the Martian in My Favorite Martian. How is that not the... number one? But that maybe that's just me showing my <laughs> old man colors. I've, I've seen a few episodes, episodes recent within the last year or two, and I really liked My Favorite Martian and his huh. performance in it. Yeah. Yeah, sadly, he is no longer with us, died in 2001. But we've heard about Boothby before, so it really would have felt like a... A, a, a jip if we got went to the academy and didn't see him mm. uh this he will return as boothby in two episodes of voyager oh, cool. but uh, yeah just those three episodes i i feel like boothby is a character that seems larger than his actual presence on screen is and mm. any book whenever they mention the academy bet boothby's name always comes up to me he he had to have been in a dozen episodes but now it's just three I well, I will say I agree with him. The hand weeding is better than herbicide. Uh, I think it just it's it's a little harder work, but I think it's better. You get more of the roots. You know, you're not poisoning anything around it. You can plant immediately afterwards. So I agree with him. Hand weeding better than herbicide. I enjoy the whole exchange though, where like Bacar got down on his hands and was planting, and Boothby's like, "Aren't you better than this? And aren't you too good for this?" And he was so grumpy to Bacar until Bacar like proved his honor i guess mm. <laughs> even though he and he absolutely knew the whole time who picard was and everything and yeah and there's I, been some fun in the non-canon sources so that boothby's actually like hundreds of years old and just hangs around there like guinan knows right. more than he should and has been around a really long time yeah that huh. that I, i'm i'm okay i like that idea yeah i and i thought it was condescending when he was like don't plant him too too deep I'm like <laughs> Which is fine. Those are his grounds to keep. Picard is the assistant here. Picard is not. Picard has no status in grounds. He keeping. is the grounds keeper. So you're right. <laughs> we get He's that wonderful scene keeper. where the dead cadet's father comes to talk to Wesley. That's Ooh. Lieutenant Commander Albert, played by Ed Lauter, Ed Lauter who's best yeah. known for Cujo, not another teen movie, the seventies version of King Kong. He's got 209 credits, uh, but he did a, die in 2013. Yeah, and he, yeah. in my mind, he often played the heavy, the bad guy. So it was nice to see him kind of that other side here. And I, mm. I thought he did, it was nice to see that other side of him. And yeah, I thought he did a really good job. Why was he never in Seinfeld? And this is his only Trek credit. Uh, yeah, I don't know. They missed him. They, they, they couldn't find a way to get him in there. He was in an episode of The Office and a couple episodes of Psych. So he was in yes. some of the good shows. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I really liked that performance and that character mm. and the just apologizing to Wesley, like, got it, drive that Ooh. guilt right into him. Yeah. But but also, like, wow, the, the father That's what they was taking mistakes. it. I mean, your world's destroyed. <laughs> and he takes the time to comfort Wesley and he tells him to go forward with commencement. And, like, that, he's the hero of the, the story in my yeah, mind. Yeah, and I think that's, again, that thing of, like, he, and I think he says something along those lines that he, you know, you understand that you know, this this happens and, you know, space is dangerous. Well, he's in Starfleet, which probably makes a difference. Right. And then yeah. for some reason, I got to wonder, like, well, why isn't he a captain? How is he only a commander? But maybe that's all he wanted. Or maybe he's a lieutenant like, commander. Yeah, he's not even a commander. I don't know his whole story. So either way, uh, he's a company man. Either way, so yeah. He's not that old. He might still be a commander or captain someday. Oh, that's true. Well, yeah. In that century, he's middle aged. Yeah. I liked Picard figuring it out the mystery, even though it's like Data and Jordy are the ones bringing him all the pieces he needs to put together, but they didn't figure it out. Picard did, and my theory is because Jordy and Data are goody two shoes, and Picard's the bad boy. Mm. I wrote down Data and Jordy are on the case because there's been several episodes, the legal episodes, where they do all the work. And they're they, Sherlock and Watson. Yeah, and uh, I thought they'd be even more integral, but yeah, they still did some of the work, and then yeah, uh, Picard drove it home. You know, it's, I, don't know, I don't even know if it's just an, uh, a matter of personality so much as is a, a, the area of expertise. I mean, mm. if, they were, if, they, if they had also gone through Starfleet Academy in the same way, they probably wouldn't have been concentrating on the same types of things that Picard would have been. They went through Starfleet he, Academy. Yes, I'm, I'm saying still the track would have been probably been different than his. And he would probably have studied something like that, those kinds of um, maneuvers. Well, he was the bad like, boy. He was the yes. risk taker. He was a top pilot. Yeah, that stunt's been banned for more than 100 years, so I guess James Kirk didn't try it. When McCart's talking to Wesley, that really tough conversation about how disappointed he is, which 
man, that was such a great scene in my opinion. I really liked it. I liked, I believed both of them in that scene. They were both acting the hell out of it. And I love that Bacard brings up the pilot of the series and reminds us where Wesley came from and that whole arc. It's a really nice way to tie it all together. And yeah. Wesley's still going to be in two more episodes. Not in season six, but he's in two episodes of the final season. So we'll see. We've talked before about the great Picard Wesley scenes, and you know how that relationship's developed. And you know, I can't remember the episode where we were like, it was the one where they were the two in the shuttle. I don't think it was Wesley's last one. It was another one, and it was mm-hmm. like it could just been the two of those. My dinner with Picard or whatever. My dinner with Wesley, <laughs> and I would have been fine. So yeah, I, I noted both those were great, and it was just yeah, it's just two guys, two two people talking to each other, being honest reflecting on their relationship and sometimes it can get old that i know where you've been kind of thing but this is a place where i think it really helped obviously it helped well wesley and uh, I, yeah i laughed out loud when he said i choose not to answer sir <laughs> and, and picard's reaction like the the what like how did <laughs> how that you? was a little bit like <laughs> mature growth for wesley because he would have never done that back in the day yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bacard mentions that the first duty of every Starfleet officer is to the truth. I don't think that's ever been mentioned as the first duty of Starfleet <laughs> officers before. I Has mean, was Kirk disobeying that first duty when he came up with the Corbinite maneuver? I, I, it just, right. I get the truth and honesty is a key moral element sure. and Starfleet officers are very moral. And I get why truth should be part of that but making it the first duty and the most important duty seemed a little bit of a stretch for me i don't i mean i think he meant scientifically or procedurally within i mean not 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 like a matter of deception among other you know not like in a a klingon sense of we must always be truthful with our enemies and blah 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 and even then they don't do that but you know what i mean Mm -hmm. i think he's talking more about for especially for an exploration vessel if someone aboard aboard a ship were lying to cover themselves and cause more danger than I really liked the scene between Wesley and Lasarno as well. When mm. Lasarno is talking to him about you have a duty to your friends, the duty to the team is more important. I didn't agree with his argument, but man, it was a persuasive argument. And right there is when you see why all these cadets have fallen in behind him. And granted based on the pips on their collar, that's my one like fashion note mm. is Wesley has two pips indicating he's a second year, which we know he started late the first year, but he's been, this is a second year. And Lasardo has four because he's a senior, he's graduating. But they, granted, he's, a, you know, he's, he's older, but also like he has a charm. He's convincing. He's one of those people that can sell something, even if it's factually inaccurate, mm. but make it sound like it's true. I, I know he was doing it to cover his own butt, but man, right. he really did a good job selling the wrong move. And we're watching from a distance because my one note was, I think it's after he asked, essentially when Wesley's like, can we have the room, essentially? <laughs> uh, Le- Carno or whatever says, everything's fine, trust me. I, I just wrote, uh, I do not. I do not trust you. But obviously we're watching from whatever God's view. Anybody that says trust me should not be trusted. <laughs> <laughs> if I trusted you, you wouldn't have to say trust me. Right. But yeah, I, uh, the other, uh, my one fashion note was, as often I comment, was his hair looks sharp. I like the way, yeah. it, I like the cut. He also had a Bajoran on his team, which was fun to see another Bajoran. Yeah, because yeah. they're still not in a part of the Federation or anything, but we're seeing more Bajorans show up. I thought it was good that it was a diverse team of. I don't want to say ne'er do wells. Diverse team of <laughs> cheaters. A diverse <laughs> team of cheaters. Men Are... and women and Bajorans cheating. While we're talking about the team, let's touch on the other two guest stars there. Yeah. Walker Brandt played Gene Hajar. Walker Brandt, best known for, according to IMDb, City Slickers, Dante's Peak. This role. Mm-hmm. <laughs> only 19 credits. Yeah. This was <laughs> only her second credit after City Slickers, and I don't see any other Trek or Seinfeld credits. Yeah. And then the Bajoran was Shannon Phil, who was, played Cito Jaxa, best known mm-hmm. for this role. Yeah. Uh, Cito Jaxa will be in another episode of The Next Generation in the final season. So we will see her character again. Hmm. So uh, but, yeah, only eight credits on IMDb for her. Yeah. About the, the, the Sarno thing. Uh, first, in that scene, where I, I thought it was also funny when, when Wesley said, I can't do this and stood up and turned his back. I was like, this would be a perfect time for him to get a phaser shot or something. 
I thought you, I almost felt like it was going to happen. We turned back to turned back around. You know, suddenly Lasarno has a knife or something. I don't know. I thought he he did such a the actor was doing such a good good job in this episode that I'm, it was interesting that to me that when Stephen mentioned earlier that they weren't even considering him at first. They they just liked him because of you know oh this is a good character this is a good performance let's find somebody else like him to do this. When uh, I I saw this and I assumed that he they made the opportunity for him because they liked the, the character. Like yeah, and I don't know if that's one it. of those, well, Trek fans know him too well, but I think Trek fans are always excited to see somebody. I mean, how many different roles did Mark Leonard play? And we always like, ah, I agree, it's Mark Leonard. Hmm. You know, so, but yeah. and again, they might have over, they overthought it. Clearly they overthought <laughs> yeah. it. Well, by this point, they were probably well in the development of Deep Space Nine and they weren't considering a character. And at that point, are you even thinking about other future spinoffs and stuff? And I think part of it was they thought he either wouldn't be interested or might not be available. So that might have been part of it, too. True. Yeah. Mm, could be. With what, I, I mentioned the timing of Wesley standing up to tell the truth. She had already rung the bell. So I kind of <laughs> wanted them to say, wait, no, nope, you can't say anything now. It's over. I rang the bell. <laughs> that, that occurred to me, too. I don't know. Um, I guess. <laughs> I'm glad that Starfleet is not so rule focused that they can't say, OK, let's listen. Just because we rang the bell. Or, well, I, my thought was he thought, well, now that she's hit the bell, I can say whatever I want. And I am <laughs> immunity. <laughs> yeah, double jeopardy. But clearly, mm. that, that is not mm. the case. I don't think Starfleet has double jeopardy. I don't think so, especially not in this instance. So, as villainous as they made Nicholas Sarno seem, and he did seem villain, especially with that charming speech of telling Wesley to lie, we yeah. find out he went to bat for his team and sacrificed yeah. himself, which gives him a bit of nobility that I think is befitting a Starfleet cadet. He did the wrong thing. He doubled down on the wrong thing so many times. He was willing to lie. But then when that blew up in his face, he took responsibility. And again, I'm saying it should have just been Tom Paris. That should have just been the same character. Right. But because well, that's, that's a Tom Paris thing. But yeah, you know, wow. I appreciated that twist there. I still, I don't, I don't know if that, well, we're probably about to say the same thing. Does he really yeah. deserve that much credit at that point? I mean, like, I think so, because I think he deserves some credit. I, obviously, not all the credit, but they could have all been expelled, and he fought for his team, saying, you know, I, I was the leader, I was the responsibility. But that was true. some credit for that. <laughs> now, so in my mind, as I was watching the first 35, 40 minutes of it, I thought, oh, they were bullying him into it. Like, come on, man, oh. got to be part of the team. Or was it, mm. come on, man, we're going to make history. That's a different kind of pressure. That's a, come on, we can do this. We're the best. There is that other side of it where it's like, well, they know he wasn't good enough. But I, I guess you have to have five to do that. That maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would assume so. So <laughs> there is some measure of judgment as far as, and they got into that leadership, whatever. But, but yeah, I, I do, I give them a slight, pass if it's more of a come on man this is going to be so awesome when we do this as opposed to come on loser you should do this blah, blah, blah. in my mind like i said the first 35 minutes i thought that's what it was but oh. now after the last 10 minutes I, I see it more as like this is going to be so awesome and man we really screwed up i think it's because we didn't we we didn't I, I still don't think we saw a lot of their feeling terrible about what happened to him we just saw them saving their own necks which i mm -hmm. think again leads towards a bullying kind of thing rather than you know i, I maybe want to no nope, i was going to say maybe one of the ladies breaking down that doesn't that, that's just sexism uh any of them having more of a breakdown of, of, of what happened rather than, than saving their own neck but uh yeah i mean that's yeah. like who was left though really right no i'm saying that there's just yeah. there was just like wesley lasarno and the two women so right right yeah so yeah if, if, yeah so the final discussion between Wesley and Picard, first of all, he says Wesley has to repeat his second year at the Academy, which now means he won't graduate during the run of the series. So that's out the window because he's got to do three more years. And there's only two years left in the series. But the whole thing where Picard hammers in, and this is where Picard still has a bit of respect from Wesley and it starts to rebuild, is that you're going to stay here. Everyone knows what you did. Your mm -hmm. life's going to suck because yeah. everybody on campus is going to hate you but you're going to do it anyway. And Wesley's like, yeah, I mean, Wesley at that point could quit and run away, but he doesn't. 
And I think that's saying something. It does show he has moral rectitude, even if he didn't have as much as we'd hoped he had. Yeah. Um, he's not the perfect hero. He's a flawed hero. But again, this episode's a lot about taking responsibility, and he, at the end, takes responsibility. I like Picard keeping it real there. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, you know, this is gonna this is gonna suck. Yeah. And I I thought I, I uh, my question is do so if he repeats that second year is he just taking the same classes? Is he gonna so. build up? Oh, my GPA is going to be higher? What? Where's the punishment? <laughs> GPA is an average. It's not cumulative. More classes oh. don't raise it higher. What if I, well, he's, if he's I, redoing a year. Yeah, oh, if, I I got, if I got Bs the first time, the second time, I'm going to get As. But then you oh, still average as a B plus or whatever. But that's still better than my Bs I had before. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. So now he's going to be valedictorian and he wanted a better. <laughs> but it's, it's at all it's going to have an asterisk with it. So yeah. Maybe it will, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. He'll probably take different electives, you know. Yeah, well, on his resume, he'll just put, you know, top 20% of my class. He won't <laughs> put that I had to do the same class as two years ago. He could just put at least I didn't die. <laughs> oh, that was fun. <laughs> so the question I'm left with at the end of this episode, is Wesley still a hero character? Yep. Or did this permanently tarnish him in the eyes of viewers? Wesley's dad died under weird circumstances, right? Because Picard still lives with that. I mean, he always lived well, Picard, with command. Was, Wesley's dad died in a situation where Picard did not have time to save both people and he made that's a choice right, and grabbed right. one. Yeah. Uh, this is why people don't choose to be a hero. Uh, <laughs> I think that's a Spider-Man quote, right? It used uh, to be a villain. And then, and then Kirk, um, Kirk, of course, had, you know, he had different times where he, you know, the obsession is the not good episode, but he, where he reflects on, I and it's, I guess it's more of a, I didn't endanger these people. It was more of a, I didn't save these people. So it is a little different, but still, still a flawed kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Lazarno? Is it Lazarno? Lacarno? What do we, whatever. I've been saying Lazarno, but. Yeah, Lazarno. Yeah, whatever. Sounds uh, right. He, I was a little disappointed that at the end when they're like, hey, uh, you know, we know what happened or whatever. Or when Wesley stood up and was like, well, this is what happened. I was a little surprised. I was surprised and a little disappointed that, he didn't have a lie ready to go, hmm. um, you know, right there. And then I was again surprised when he, you know, like you said, he stepped up and, and took full responsibility. So maybe at that point he was like, you know what? And again, maybe that's Wesley's the true leader of the group because he, he did step up. Um, my last note is I always love seeing Starfleet. I love seeing the Golden Gate Bridge there. I love that stuff. And I didn't notice till the end they had the, the flag at half mast mm. for, nice. for, for Lawrence. So I thought that I was I missed cool. that. Yeah, it's at the very end when I was just because I have to take in the the Golden Gate and the and the and Starfleet Academy and all that stuff. So I always love that. The episode was directed by Paul Lynch, uh, who this is the last Next Generation episode he's directing. He directed five, but he will do five DS nine and uh, no no other Trek after that that I see. So. He's had a nice run, but that, that's the end of his next gen run. Stephen, alternate episode. Mine was I. I, I mentioned I, th- I thought of a few good men at one point, and then I started thinking Top Gun because we had a, a screw up in the air, and you know our hero was kind of responsible. But I went back to an officer and a gentleman in space. So I would have liked it if Wesley had a lady in. I was going to say in the in the. Uh, <laughs> In town, but San Francisco, so it's not exactly a small town, but, you know, there might be a girl there. So at the end, he carries her off after he's told the truth. He quits Starfleet, and he carries her off. And actually, that's not the end. At the end of Officer Gentleman, he becomes a, he graduates. So no, when he graduates, he goes and carries that, that <laughs> woman off his feet. So that's what I, I would have, that would be my alternate episode. Or I guess a, a, a season, alternate season, I guess. Yeah, get all that in. So. Let's get to the rankings. Scale of one to ten. How annoying was Wesley? I'm, I, I'm going like a five and a half. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah, I was really annoyed <laughs> that he didn't step forward earlier. Yeah. I mean, I get it. He's a kid. We forget yeah. that he's a kid because he hung with the adults for so long. Yeah. But I'm going to give him a two because I did find him slightly annoying, but I don't think he deserves too much of our hate. I wish he had. I just wish he had. Yeah, I wanted more out of him sooner. And it, some of that's the my usual rant about what's the mystery? Oh, okay, that's the mystery that you 
screwed up. Although I did like the mystery ending up being, I did like the way they, they figured all that out though, to be, to be fair. Yeah. It, that was at about a three, and I, I know we keep saying that they're kids and so on, but I, I really don't think that's, that this situation is that unique to an age. I mean, I think full-grown adults would probably do a lot of the same things in a situation, probably. Absolutely. Have. Yeah, I mean, so cer- cuddle, Certainly right? politicians, certainly. Absolutely. Uh, I just think it's more justifiable when a kid does it. Hmm. Adults behave badly. It's just less justifiable. <laughs> true. Who was your annoyance of the episode? Mine was Wesley. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Probably not to go with Lasarno. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I hate to because I liked the character. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I, I'm not going to go with Lasarno because he eventually also did sort of the right thing, you know, when he came forward mm-hmm. and protected his team. So instead, I'm going to go with Cito Jaxa and Gene Hajar, mm-hmm. the two yeah. cadets that never did show remorse. Mm. I wish, I, and I, Again, they're always going to be underwritten. I wish we'd, yeah, I wish we'd heard more from them too. So, this would have benefited from being a sixty-minute episode instead of a forty-three-minute episode or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't think it had legs for two-parter, but it could have benefited for some extra scenes. Yeah. Who are you going to have a drink with? Uh, our, our 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 Vulcan uh, prosecutor Satel. Is that it? okay? Yeah, because I'm going to ask him about Elaine Bennis. So t- okay, Keith, and we'll also trade. You know, as as attorneys, I I I feel like he's a jag attorney. By <laughs> jag, I mean junior attorney general, not a jag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably Picard for the details of what exactly he did do. Ah, that's good. Well, I mean, purely uh, shallowy. I was going to say Jagar, but she, you know betrayed everybody and did not fess up to it so i can't in good conscience pick her um even though she was very attractive i'm going to say boothby because Mm. he just seems like the best person to hang out with yeah boothby ranking the episode let's start with the other wesley episode this season just as a whatever the game Better or worse than the game that's this season that's what i was was. (laughs) wesley got two episodes this season but it just seems like that was forever ago. I mean, just it was because we took months off in the middle of the season. We, yeah, we did take a break. Oh wow! I mean, I'm kind of torn. Like this yeah. is more meaningful, but I also really dug that episode. Yeah, this, this more is fun. closer than I would have thought because that was actually that one fun, was right? <laughs> the game was more fun, but I liked yeah. this episode. Yeah, oh, God. Ah. I'm, I'm gonna have to go under the game. I think it just under. Yeah. I think I am too. Although I, I really did like this episode. I'll go under because of Ashley Judd. That's where I, that's where I ended up landing <laughs> too. She was amazing. She was a lot of fun. She made a lot of fun. I mean, Robert Duncan McNeil is also a great guest star, but yeah. True. Ash, how do you beat Ashley Judd? Yeah. Right underneath that's disaster. With the game? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> disaster, yeah. which was the doing. episode right before the game. The earthquake. They had to go down there to save Alexander or somebody. No, some other kid, right? I mean, was it Alexander? Oh, uh, that's where everybody was separated. Picard was in the turbo lift with the kids, oh, and Troy man. was in charge. I'm gonna say this is better. Yeah, that's a fun one too. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Sorry, Keith. I, I, I got in there. No, no, that's. I'm gonna that's, say it's better. I'm gonna. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I was, I was in the middle on that one anyway. It's funny the two Wesleys got back to back rankings. Well, and you, in the top half of the way. season. <laughs> Next week, the cost of living. Not the cost of living, just cost of living. An undetectable paras as undetectable parasites devour the ship. Deanna's mother arrives, taking young Alexander under her wing en route to meet a, a man she's blindly agreed to marry. Until then, live long. And as the Beastie Boys say, be true to yourself and you were no you will n- mm? This is how they say it. Be true to yourself and you will never never fall. <laughs> and my, uh, my background reflects my summation of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> of the next one, so. <laughs> it's All Been Done presents. Who's got the time?